So if you could help with that, we would greatly appreciate it. And maybe I need to explain for those of you who are not familiar with OCC. OCC is Operation Christmas Child. It's a ministry that we have been involved in for many years. And what Operation Christmas Child is, is that we take a shoebox, uh, you take a shoebox, you take it home, and you fill it with uh, socks or toys or little things that you can put in the shoebox. And in that box, uh, we put the, the uh, plan of salvation uh, and the gospel message. And those boxes are sent all over the world. It's not just Parkway Baptist Church. This is a thing that's done throughout the country. And uh, uh, so those, these boxes are collected, uh, and then we send them out. And I think it's around Thanksgiving when uh, they start collecting and sending out and all of that, isn't it? So, and if you want to say things get very busy around Parkway, you come around that time and we are getting those boxes. You see a lot of blessed saints in the uh, back there putting all these boxes together and, and uh, getting them ready. But uh, be in prayer for Operation Christmas Child. This is a big ministry that we've been involved in and God has blessed it. You never know what child is going to receive a shoebox. And what it's going to do, not only for that child, but uh, for the families also. So you've been in prayer for that. And if you can help bring uh, socks, uh, we're taking uh, those in uh, this month. Also, today, we're having a Dinkins meeting at 4 o'clock. So, Dinkins, uh, if you can uh, come on out at 4, we're going to be meeting uh, this afternoon here at the church. Well, I think that's all I have as far as announcements go. Take a look at the bulletin. The Shepherd Center is going to be meeting uh, on the 14th at the at First Pres, our First Presbyterian for barbecue and all of that. So that's always a good thing. And then also on the inside, we see so and so on the 16th. So you be in prayer for all the ministries and pray for the consider how you can be a part of it. Well, that's all I have as far as announcements. So let's start off the morning the right way in prayer. And let's just thank Jesus for his presence in this place today. Father in heaven, we come before you thanking you, Lord, for your love, for your grace, for your mercy. And Father, we thank you for your presence right here and right now, Lord, uh, in this place. So Father, we pray today as we lift our voices up in song and as the word is preached, Father, that you be magnified and glorified in this place. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to be so happy to see Carla cover. Huh? <laughs> 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 I'm going to be so happy to see Carla cover. I'm going to be so happy to see Carla cover.
Not so good. We're missing all four stances. We just have to hit number 23.
Amen. Take your Bibles and turn with me this morning to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, and the title of my message this morning is A Model Church Member. Now, I firmly believe that the church is only as strong as its weakest member. And I don't say that lightly, because when you see the churches that are in trouble today, just as they were back then, it wasn't trouble with the uh, structure of the building in which the church met. There wasn't trouble with the uh, foundation, maybe, or the ceiling. Uh, what the problem was that caused the churches to be in disarray was the church itself, which are the people that make up the church. Church, the church is not going to have a ceiling and, uh, and a foundation. The church is you and I. And that's what we have to realize that when we come together, we come together not just as individual bodies, but folks, we have one thing in common. Uh, for those of us who are saved, we are the called out ones. And for those of us who are saved, we should be a part of the body of believers here at Parkway Baptist Church. Now, when you see the sign out there, Parkway Baptist Church, they're not talking about our property and how long maintained the grass may be, or how nice the building may look, or whether the parking lot is off the road or whatever. When we say Parkway Baptist Church, we're talking about us, the people involved in the church. When the Lord spoke through John in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, and he assessed the different churches, he wasn't talking about where they met, this church property. He was talking about the individuals who made up the church. And there was a, 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 an assessment of each one of those seven churches. Some had their strong points, some had their weak points. But the Lord addressed the people and the angel, the angelos, the messenger, which is the pastor of that church, to give instruction to that pastor of what he needed to do to bring the church back in line according to God's instruction. He church, that's what we need to do today. Now, here's why I'm focusing on this. And aside from last week, uh, which was our Fourth of July celebration, I've been talking about how we should be building each other up. I've been talking about some of the things that uh, uh, help the church us get through hard times because, folks, I'm telling you right now, if you look around, our denomination is in disarray. Our churches are in disarray. And when you see it from the side of the side of the on the church property uh, site, it's not because the walls are crumbling, it's not because the ceiling is falling in, it's not because the physical foundation has started to crack and deteriorate, it's because the spiritual foundation has cracked and deteriorated. And the church has been in disarray ever since. So, church, it's important that we understand it. But no matter what, we are Christians. We are called out by His name to follow Jesus Christ. And that's what I've stated before. I don't have to be a Southern Baptist. I don't have to be a Baptist. I don't have to be anything other than a man called by God to preach His word. And as long as I have the motivation of the Lord to that word, I'm going to be faithful to it. But as soon as it starts to break your life from the word of God, I'm going to follow the word of God. But if we are going to stand, the truth of this going on, and it's coming on the way, and I believe there's no other person, the devil predicts this. We don't have to be strong ourselves. And that's what can be in a divisiveness. That can be in a non-commitment. That can be in a uh, 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 division of mind and body and spirit. We don't have to be that one or the other set apart, trusting in the final commitment of Jesus Christ. That's what we're called to do. And I don't care personally 
If you have a crowd of people that are preaching to you on a Sunday morning, or 500. I would rather have five strong believers in Jesus Christ who are really not really crowded than five women who are here just for show. And I want to find that they are very willing to pay us lips. But that guy who's got it for me, I'm going to be taking a hand here and saying, I don't care about that stuff. That's not going to get you into the life. That's not going to kill you into the trials of life. The only thing that's going to be the life of the trials of life and the temptations of life and the whole world has been shaken. The only thing that's going to be the life at that point is how well grounded you are in God's Word. All the other stuff, it's nice, but it's superficial. So, these things were important back then, they're important today. If we're going to be strong believers, if we're going to have a strong church, and not church building, but church, we need to understand how can I do my part? How can I be a strong church member to support my brothers and sisters? Well, praise God, we're not left in the dark about this. Where the God gives us instructions on all of this. And we see it in part in what we're about to consider now. So let's stand and honor and reverence to God's holy inspired infallible word in Acts chapter 4. In verse 32, we read. Now, the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Now, there was there anyone among them who lacked? For all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold, and laid them at the apostles' feet, and they distributed to each as anyone had need. And Jesus, who was also named Barnabas, <coughs> by the apostles, which is translated as son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyprus, having lands sold it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Let us pray. Father in heaven, bless the meaning of your word. Father, today, Lord, we need your instruction. We need your direction. Lord, we need your presence. And Lord, your people don't need to hear information. Father, they need revelation. So, Father, that can't be done through the speculation of this man, but Father, it can come through the anointing of your spirit and for you to speak through me the words that you would have me to say, the thoughts that you would have me to think. And be able to have the ability, Lord, to proclaim it boldly, not holding anything back, but, Father, to tell in love, Father, what we need to know if we're going to be strong in you. So, Father, I pray today that you increase and I decrease. And, Father, it's your name that's magnified and not Brother Tom. And that, Lord, today will be a day of true worship and praise. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. What makes a Bible church member? Knowing that no one is perfect, that we're all sinners saved by grace. And I guess that's one thing that helps us from the very beginning. To know that I can't point my finger at anybody without pointing my, it, it first at me. So there's a certain humility that comes if you're going to be an effective church member, but there are things that we can improve upon. There are things that we can do knowing that God has saved us, that we are transformed, we're not the same, that we're a different person. What is it that we need to know as a, as a member church member? Well, first of all, we need, as we see up here at the very beginning, that they were here and they were learning from the apostles. So there is a need for the Word of God to be preached. And there's a need for the Word of God to be listened to. Now, folks, Paul said there's going to come a day when people's ears are going to be, that's all they're going to want to do. They, they want to be have their ears tickled. They want to feel good when they leave a church sermon. 
In fact, as I've always believed, there are a lot of people who want more ways than those uh, to come out of a sermon, that it's all good, that everything is going to be fine. But church, that's not the reality of life. That's not the reality of our spiritual state. The gospel of Jesus Christ tells us that without Him, we're all doomed. That we have nothing that we deserve that's good. That what we have coming to us and what we deserve is death and death alone because that's the wages of sin. The Lord didn't bring that on us. We brought that on ourselves. So there is a need and a hunger for the Word of God to be preached. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. I preach to myself every Sunday. And the other thing is that I don't want to preach because it cuts to the bone. But God didn't tell me to do what was comfortable. God didn't call me to do what was easy. He said, you preach the word faithful. And that's what I do Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. My sermons are not here to make you feel good about yourself. My sermons are not here to increase membership. My sermons are not here to get thumbs up on that Facebook or YouTube or whatever. I couldn't care less. What I do care about is that I handle the Word of God correctly. And if I handle it correctly, people are going to get their toes stepped on, including mine. Because the gospel is offensive. It goes against your need to feel good. Your need to be edified and bear fruit. Now, the Bible does do that. And we're supposed to do that as fellow believers. But the priority of the Word of God is not to elevate you, it's to elevate Jesus Christ, who, in spite of us, died for us, and gave us eternal life. So that's the first thing for a model church member to, to possess. It's a hunger, a need for the gospel of Jesus Christ. My friends, if you're out there looking on uh, uh, whatever that contracts you, Facebook, YouTube, whatever, if you, can be, if you can be in church, my friend, you need to be in church. There is something special about coming together, and I'm going to get on those toes too here in just a minute. There is something special about coming together, identifying each other, worshiping together. Now, I understand there are some of you who are afraid of COVID. I, I get it. There are some of you who are not able to come. I get it. And it's our joy and pleasure to be able to deliver a message of God to you. It's better than nothing. But it's not the optimal. The optimal option is for you to be here, to be loved down, to be able to lift your voice up in praise, to pray with to pray alongside to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and experience Him, experience Him in a special way. So that's my soapbox for that, so I'll move on. But a model church member is not only one who is hungry for God's Word, a model church member is a giving member. The reason why many church members today, or many churches today, are unstable is because the members are unstable. They have a what's in it for me attitude. And I'll make it very clear to anybody who asks me, we're not Walmart. We're not here to compete with any other church in this area. I couldn't tell you how what the other churches are doing. I think they're doing and what's the most concern is what we do here at Parkway Baptist Church. I'm not accountable for what goes on at Fernando or, or, or Longview or all these other churches. I am going to be accountable for what we do here at Parkway. And the word of God is either going to be enough to bring you in and hold you, or it's not. We're not going to compete the best programs at the lowest prices and the lowest commitment. That's not what the Bible requires of us. But there are many people here today, not here maybe physically, but there are a lot of people in our churches today who preach of what you got for me. I don't want to have a contemporary service. I don't want a traditional service. I want to be able to be in a place where they all dress down, or I want to be in a place where they all dress down. I couldn't tell us about any of that stuff. I don't think the matters is that we are preaching and teaching the word of God. 
no shortage of criticism about the church. What I have yet to hear are solutions to go right behind it. So church, there is a need for church members in every church. And if you're not a church member, let me tell you this, it may hurt your feelings, but you're rebelling against the Word of God. You're within sin, right? and God's not going to bless it. And God's not going to bless you. There is something spiritual. There's something supernatural about all of us. 
Now, we're all saved by grace. Don't get me wrong. And I'm going to tell you right now, whether you remember or not, I'm going to love you. I'm going to treat you just as if you were our own. But you're not our own. So be a part of us. Instead of being casually or comfortably off to the sun. Enough about that soapbox. Also, in Acts chapter 4, we also see that there was a collective with the members there. There was a collective desire to give to the church. You see, there was a great need to get that church off its feet, to get it going. And you see here that no one considered anything to be their own. I mean, they wanted to give. They all came and gave. And you know what? Luke records, no one lacked in anything. Did you notice that? There was no need in that church. That fledgling, called out group collection of fellow believers. They bought all that they had. Now, folks, a lot of people misread this passage. Well, that goes to show you right there that God approves of communism. No, this is not communism. Communism is a godless government program where the government takes it all. What we see here is a specific need that was out of the ordinary, and there was a need for people to come together and give all they had. Nobody forced them, but they gave willingly. And also, they gave to honor God so that the church would grow. Communism gives to the government to honor the government and not God. So if anybody tells you the Bible talks about communism, no, they need to be correct. Because this is not a, 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 a popping up of, of an economic system or a government system. This is the popping up of God's people so that they can be equipped to go and do the work. There was a money for it, and it came through with people giving. Now, God has called us to give. I mean, that's one of the fundamentals of Christianity. Christianity 101. Uh, Jesus said, You tithe mint and cumin, or mint and cumin, and all of these things. These are things that you should have been doing from the very beginning. So Jesus is saying, Your tithes. That's just understood you should be given. But your offerings you should be given too. Now, guys, I'm not calling you every one of us to go out and sell our property, sell everything we have, and give it to the church. We're not in the situation that the first century church was in right now. But he does want you to give. He does want you to support. And folks, if you have more don't look at what you have in comparison to someone who doesn't have. Well, they only gave a little bit, so I'm not going to give everything I've got. I'm going to give in proportion to what the least member gave. No, that's not the right attitude. You give all that God demands of you, knowing that it all belongs to Him in the first place. So we give from the heart, not out of our resources. The lady who gave the widow's money had nothing. And what she gave was insignificant. But when Jesus saw her heart, her attitude, and what she did, he said, There is none here that is more worthy of praise and honor than this woman here. We give out of our riches. She gave out of her heart. And that's how it should be for each and every one of us. Now, also, a model church member is not one who just gives, uh, is a member, and who is uh, hungry for the Word of God, a model church member also looks for those who need support. Look at verse 36 here. And Jesus was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyprus. Here is a man, if you want to see a model church member, uh, Barnabas is a good one. I mean, just the name right out of the gate, son of encouragement. Boy, how would you like to have that title? I mean, to go around, oh yeah, that, that man is an encourager. That lady is a supporter. To be able to go and have that reputation, that's worth more than any academic or financial or social title that you could ever accumulate. 
board to be able to have on your tombstone an encourager. This is what Barnabas was. He was a man who was special in Bible history. He was a man who encouraged others. First of all, he encouraged them as well. He did. He was an, uh, uh, an example. But also, he encouraged other people. Who did he encourage? Well, first of all, he encouraged Paul. In Acts chapter 9, verse 26, we see that Barnabas defended Paul. And we read in that passage, and when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles, and he declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road, and that he had spoken to him, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. So here is Paul. Everybody was afraid of him. And we see, uh, if we, yeah, Paul, but we also see Barnabas, who was in the of all of that, who saw a man who had a past, but was trying to transform his life. And he vouched for Paul. The guys, you need to listen to me. And I want you to notice something else. Barnabas wasn't just a supporter of Paul. He was also his mentor, a godly mentor. Now, when you go to chapters 12 and 13 and at the beginning of these chapters, you see as uh, Barnabas and Paul make their way around doing ministry, they lead Barnabas and Paul right here and there. Barnabas and Paul did this out of the other. But as you creep towards chapter 15, you start to see a shift. Not Barnabas and Paul, but Paul, now, and Barnabas. You see, part of being a godly church man, helping your brothers and sisters out, is knowing when you should take center stage. And when it's time for you to go back and decrease, as you allow the others to increase, so that they can go and do the work of the Lord. That's a very important concept, church. A lot of times we want it to all be about us. We want to be able to share in the glory. We want people shouting our name. We want the pats on the backs and the shake of the hand and all that. And man, you're great and great and great. But listen, there's no room for your ego and the Holy Spirit if you're going to be a minister. There's no such thing as pride when it comes to ministry. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's all about Him and how we glorify Him. There may come a day when I step down from this pulpit and someone else takes my place. I'm not going to be praying, Lord, let him fall flat on his face. Lord, let him fail. Lord, let the congregation exalt me and go away with him. That's not going to be my prayer. My prayer will be, Lord, you bless that man. And you relinquish me from this place to where I'm nothing but maybe a fond memory. But let the focus be on the man who is preaching the word because he's going to need all the support he can get. It's not about us. It's all about the one who we serve. So not only should we be encouragers, not only should we be mentors, but also we should be defenders. I mean, that's what a modern church uh, uh, member will do. They will defend those and help those who are fallen. In Acts chapter 15, verse 36, we also read, after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, Let us now go back and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Now Barnabas was determined to take with them John called Mark, but Paul insisted that they should not take with them the one who had departed from them in Pantera and had not gone with them to the work. Then the contention became so sharp that they parted from one another, 
And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. But Barnabas chose Silas and the third being commended by the brethren to the grace of God. And he went to Syria and uh, Cilicia, strengthening the churches. Isn't it ironic? That when Paul started out, he was fallen and no one wanted anything to do with him. And Paul now has nothing to do with someone else who would fall. Who was consistent through the whole thing? Barnabas was. He stood by uh, he stood by Paul when he was down, and nobody wanted to give him a chance. And he stood by Mark, who had fallen, and he lifted him up to give him a second chance. Because that's a encourage That's what we should be. Too many people pointing their fingers at us. Well, you did this. Or you did that. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand if you have a past. Because I know if you didn't, you'd be lying. And I'm not going to ask you to lie in church. But I can tell you that every one of us are fallen people. We fall constantly. Making mistakes. I appreciate a brother or a sister who said, Yeah, what you did was wrong. But I'm here to help you through it. I'm not here to kick you while you're down. I'm here to extend a hand to lift you up so you can keep going. That's a model church member. That's the one who realizes I'm nothing but a sinner saved by grace. So let me show you how I got through my hard times and be a blessing to you so that you can once again be a blessing to others and then find the church and I'll put it. A model church member develops others. We, develops others. we saw Paul doing this, uh, or Barnabas doing this with Paul, and we saw Paul being able to take that and go to the different churches and develop churches. We see how Barnabas did this, investing in Mark, so that Mark could go and do all that he did. And I believe he's the writer of the Gospel of Mark. I mean, if he would have kicked Mark while he was down, where would we have that Gospel? So where today do we see evidence that we should negate our responsibility to take each other and lift each other up by mentoring, by discipling? I mean, I was talking to a brother, uh, He's passed on now, but uh, he loved to do woodwork, and his name escapes me. But uh, I mean, this I went to go visit his house, he and his wife, Newton, uh, Jimmy Newton. Went to go visit Brother Jimmy's house, and I thought it was going to be maybe 30 minutes, an hour. It was kind of getting on towards the uh, uh, later hours. I was there, I think, for three and a half hours. It took me from room to room to room and showed me all of the things that he did doing woodwork. All the time I was on a mission trip and we built this for the uh, villagers and did that. And this man, I'm going, to be tell, I, I'm going to be honest with you, you can't buy the stuff that he was able to make, the quality of the things he was able to make, clocks, um, 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 drawers, I mean, all kinds of stuff. He was a master wizard. And I said, brother, what would you have against taking some of our young people and showing them how to do this? So all the whole time, I, I helped the villagers do that. I said, well, you know, your community here can use that. Parkway can use that. And we talked about him turning that into a ministry. Church, if you have an interest right now, whatever you have an interest in, you can make it a ministry. I don't care what it is. It may be your job. It may be some hobby. It may be specialty things that you can do. I mean, my goodness. Three years ago, I got up a fishing rodeo for kids and uh, church members who just loved to fish. I said, well, let's go fish. And they had the best time. And it started growing. Of course, we don't have the people now to do it, but who says that we can't do it in the future? Anything you like to do, cook it, so. Make fish, honey. 
Who says you can't take a younger person out and do those things that you like and do it with someone who could use your guidance, your experience, to be able to pass it on, especially with our young people. Church, we're losing our children. We're losing our young people today. They have more of this junk on TV and, and uh, uh, computers that are taking their mind off of godly things. Heaven knows we can use some godly men and women to take these young people by the hand and say, listen, let me be a positive godly influence in your life. That's what being a mentor is. It may be taking someone that you work with or someone here that's young and just going out having breakfast or talking or doing whatever and just bringing each other along. And you know what's going to happen when we do all of these things? You're going to see, I honestly believe, because it worked in the Bible and I don't see why it wouldn't work here, when you have people who are committed to each other at Parkway Baptist Church, who are going on, as they say, put their money where their mouth is. And you have people who are hungry for God's Word. Not to come here to be entertained, not to have their ears tickled, but to hear and learn what the Word of God has to say. And when you see that you don't have anything that belongs to you, that everything is God, so I'm going to give everything I've got that I can give to my church, for my Lord. And then when you start looking for opportunities to be a blessing, to be an encouragement to others who are down, and when you look for people who could use some of your experience, some of your ability, just to be a gathering influence in their lives, church, what you're going to see is a church with one heart and one mind and one spirit. And the Bible says every time those people gathered together in His name. The Holy Spirit showed up and He showed down. I don't believe that we have to spend thousands of dollars on some big-time evangelist to come in here and do what the Word of God tells us we should be doing in the first place. I believe the formula is simple. We be model Christians so that we can be model church members and we can build this church up, and we can continue to do mighty things for the Lord. Do you believe that can still happen at Parkway Baptist Church? Amen. Let's turn and have a closing word of prayer. You may be here this morning, and you don't know the Lord. Oh, you're missing out. You're missing out on the greatest fellowship of all, and that's with Jesus. All you have to do is confess that you're a sinner. Admit it. And then repent of your sins, which means turn the other way. Start following Him. Trust in Him daily. And my friend, you can belong to what we see as the family of God. And what a sweet family He is. So while the invitation is being given, you respond in a way that's going to bring you into the family of God. Father in heaven, thank you for this day. Thank you for your blessings and your presence in this place. Father, we thank you that we have been given the awesome opportunity, Lord, to come into your presence. Father, there are churches right now, people who are gathered in caves. Lord, they're, they're gathered together in places where uh, they're hiding right now. But Lord, the Spirit is strong because they have each other and they have you. Father, help us to seek that as well. Even though we're surrounded by blessings that... Lord, we can't even begin to thank you for it. Help us to remember that the church is not these four walls and this seat. It's each and every one of us. So help us as this church honor and glorify you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. That amen. You come. Amen. 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 Amen.
Church, I told you, there's some times when the Lord stirs us, and uh, I think today is one of those days. So I'm going to ask everyone to come up, Brother Eddie, Miss Brenda, and Miss Ruby, and Brother Charles, y'all come on up, and Brian and Luke. Can, would you let us see it? Oh, okay, okay. Well... Y'all know just about everybody here, but I'm going to introduce them anyway. This is Brother Eddie and Miss Brenda Prince. Eddie's, well, Miss Brenda's been blessing us with her presence. We're talking to Eddie, Brother Eddie. <laughs> no, they a blessing. They've been a blessing to both of us. And they uh, uh, came down this morning, and they want to uh, uh, join our family, our church. Uh, they're coming from Fellowship Baptist, so we know that they're in good standing with the Lord as far as salvation is concerned. So I need a motion that we accept them. You have a second? I know it's in front of us. Say amen. Praise the Lord. This is Miss Ruby and Brother Charles. And they have been coming for quite a while. But that comes and all that has kept them kind of away and back and all that. I think that matters is that they're here right now and they're not to align with our church. And they, they are coming from Hernando Baptist Church. So they are not to tell you from personal experience. They both are a blessing. So I need a motion that we accept them. Need a second? All those in favor say praise the Lord. Any opponent. And of course, there won't be. All right, now, 
Let us come out with us. That's why we're asking those big things. It's not only about your skin, it's not only about your hand. This is why I look warmer. I've been talking to Brian Luke for a while. And uh, he has come with a desire uh, just to be able to follow the Lord as a believer. And praise the Lord, he's coming down now, uh, uh, making a public profession of faith. And uh, we're going to be getting ready to uh, baptize him. So I'm going to be meeting with mom and dad. And that's going to be coming up here uh, very soon. So you be in prayer for Brian Luke and the family as well. What a day this has been. Uh, but I can tell you, this young man has a heart for the Lord. He is very inquisitive. He is very smart. But we all met him a couple of times, but uh, uh, he is going to be a mighty man of God as he moves forward. Because he has a mighty mom and a mighty dad of God. So uh, you go and pray for Brian Luke. And I'm going to ask that, uh, who can I get to stand by him? Uh, Brother Dan, would you mind just standing with the families here? As they make their way around, you can make way down around here. If you don't feel comfortable because of COVID, but uh, uh, you're shaking hands and at least come down and wave, six feet apart, whatever we do. But uh, I can tell you, our church is rejoicing over every one of your decisions today. Let us stay in close and pray. Everybody else with you. Father, as we come to you this morning, Lord, we do thank you for this, this day. We thank you for the message that uh, you gave our pastor and uh, the boldness he was able to preach this word this, Lord, this morning, Lord. Thank you for his obedience, Father. Lord, as we celebrate this morning with all the, the obedient people that come forward to, to stand with this church and uh, my son coming forward and to give his life to you, I'm just... I'm still here with John, just uh, I'm overflowing inside. I thank you for that feeling, Father. And uh, I just ask that you bless this time. I ask you bless this congregation. I pray that we can be that uh, shining light for this community of Fernando that you desire for us to be, Father. As we leave this place, as we guide and direct us, we ask all these things in Jesus' name.